I have not very tales. Like, <laughs> this one. So many of the oldest of the King Arthur tales, which have now been to uh, told for, we have evidence of at least 1,500 years. Um, so in the early days, of course, two different faiths were, what's the word, uh, observed in the world of the Celts and the world of what became England. And that was the older pagan faith, which celebrated gods and goddesses and nature. And then the new Christian faith, which slowly took over with its tales of saints, Mary, her son. And there was not as much difference, perhaps, back then, between those tales and those beliefs as there have been made out to be over the intervening centuries. One of the, the knights of the round table, which uh, became one of the most Christian of knights, was very obviously a, well, um, a, a hero, a Welsh hero, from prior to the introduction of Christianity to that part of the world. And his name was Gawain. He was a prince of the Orkney Islands. The Orkneys, of course, being very, very far. I say Welsh, but I totally got that wrong. It's far north of what is now Scotland. Wild pagan land. And Gawain and his brothers grew to be bold and quick to anger, but quick to forgive. And Gawain understood that one always stood by one's lord. If someone said the wrong thing and impugned his honor, well, Gawain would stand and offer to fight for the death, just to show that his faith in his leader was not misplaced. Needless to say, very few took him up on that challenge. However, one day, a creature of the forest came into Arthur's Hall. In these days, the veil between the other world and this world was very thin indeed. And I'll tell you that to him now. New Year's Day, dawning wet on Triton's shore. King's Hall roused by a pounding on the door. A giant knight dressed in green never seen before. Hefts an axe and holds it high and lets a challenge roar. You craven men may fear dishonor, but you fear my vengeance more. For that's fear that chills you like a wraith. And it's doubt you gird about your waist. It's rare that men will hold to faith and face me in the morning. Who will challenge me? Arthur? Ha ha ha. Any of you? Ha ha ha. I thought not. They all are craven. <laughs> Sir Gawain, pagan prince of Northern Isles. He shouted, shame on you, brothers, on your silence. He took the axe and struck his blow and brought the giant blow. He raised his head and held it high and said, and met the giant's eye and cried, I'll meet your vengeance in a year and we'll see you will die. You or I, for that fear that chills you like a wraith. And it's doubt you burn about your waist. It's rare the man will hold to me and face me in the morning. Months pass and some are gone, and Gawain leaves upon his quest with a five point star sign of faith upon his chest. He seeks his foe and travels west, not knowing where to go. There's no clue until a baroness has offered aid to show, but only if he stays as guest within her bower. Three days, no less. <laughs> For that fear that chills you like a wraith, and it's doubt you gird about your waist. It's rare the man will hold to faith and face me in the morning. She plays the maid 
but feign the Baroness's hope. Gawain's not swayed, for another lady holds his own. She offers body, offers land, but each advance is spurned. She puts a belt into his hand, a gift of magic earned by constancy in face of all temptation to his given word. That fear that chills you like a rain, but this is hope you burn about your waist. It's rare the man will hold to me and face me in the morning. So New Year's Day, dawning wet on Britain's shore. And Galway meets that same green knight once more. A man who laughs and gives his hand instead of Charon's fee. Galway at last perceives his god and bends a reverend knee. Take and wear my lady's belt, the green man gladly cries. See to it you serve us well in all the paths of life. Be constant and be faithful, and wear that belt for all to see, that a 